Hello everybody. In this lecture, let us understand the concept of quadratic regression here. And uh, I have some data here. You have got uh, a variable called x. So it might be a variable of time, the different time periods which are there. And it could be a data of sales in a particular organization. And I will see that how quadratic regression becomes a better fit in certain cases. So what I'll do is I'll try to understand and run the linear regression. So why is actually a dependent variable on x here and uh, let's let us do one thing first of all let us plot this particular data and that will become a very important plot for me i'll keep on adding the data so i've got on x axis i have x variable and on y axis i've got y variable so you can see x is starting from one and going up to nine and these are the y dot so this is my original data if you see that's the original data right so uh let me first of all see that uh, how i can predict the values of y using x so i'm going to go to data and data analysis and there i check in regression and what i do is first i select my dependent variable which is y in this case here and uh, then i'm going to select my input range the x variable right here and let me let me paste this particular data somewhere on this sheet itself let's put let me put it in the cell and i'll also check the residuals and click ok so i get a wonderful regression output let me get to the regression output here and you can see there's a r square of 0.46 so if I'm dealing only with single variable, I would always recommend just talk, think about the R square. So that means 0.46 if I convert into percentage, tells me that 46% variation is caused in, uh, in Y is caused by X. And that's my uh, ANOVA table. The value is precisely 0 0.05. So I would say, okay, fair enough, it is close. But okay, let me consider it. Yes, it is a significant model to study. I see my regression coefficients here, right? And that's intercept x coefficient is minus 0 0.84 uh, beta coefficient. <clears throat> and these are the residuals. So I'll just give you a little input of how do you calculate these particular residuals. So these residuals are actually difference between predicted and the original values. So you can see that these are the predicted values of y. How do you get these predicted values? so it's pretty simple you know you just simply put the regression equation so what is the regression equation here regression equation here is beta zero you can refer to the previous lecture how i did that plus beta one and i'm going to freeze both these values so function f4 uh, is the key which i'm going to use uh, to freeze this cell right here sorry so it is function f4 and i'm also going to freeze this one right here and times my x value which is right here right so i'm trying to tell you uh, that how this 37.024 actually appeared so that's the predicted value you can scroll it down the formula and you can see these predicted values are calculated by Excel exactly the same way. And you know there are original values of Y. So there are original values of Y right here. So I'm going to select them. And uh, let me paste them here. So these are the original Y. Right. And the residuals are actually original minus predicted right i have to scroll it down so i hope uh, now you have an absolute clarity that how did you get all these values you can see that all these values are absolutely same as that so i've shown you manually that uh, how this entire table of observation predicted y and residual actually comes up so residual is actually distance of predicted value from the original value so what i'm going to do is i'm to take this entire predicted y into my chart once again right here okay in this particular chart 
and I'll see how my linear and quadratic regression models are different. So right now, this is a linear fit model, and I'm to insert this particular predicted y value into this, and let's see how exactly I'm going to fit it in. So I'm going to go to chart design, select data, and I'll add a linear trend here. I will name it a linear trend. My series X values are absolutely same. There is no change in it. What is my series Y values? These are predicted Y values right here. So I'll select all of them and click OK. So it is added. Click OK. And I can get back to my chart. There is an orange. These are the orange dots which are added. And I'll right click. I'll convert it into a line. So I'll just Convert it into a solid line, a little thin one, right? And so that's my predicted value. So that's my trend line, right? Linear trend. So orange, which is going to be working as my predicted line. Let me make it a little better. Uh, I know that y axis, I can start it from 20, right? Let's start it from 20. And it looks a better chart to me now. I'll also uh, add a chart element here and I will say data labels uh, not the data labels I just wanted to add the legends right so I'm going to put them at the bottom so you have Y as your original dots and you have an orange as your linear trend let me now see uh, that how actually the quadrant trend is going to fit in so what I'm going to do is I will shift my Y a variable a little on the side and I'm going to fit in my quadratic value of x so I'm going to use something called x square here and that would be x times 2 so I'm squaring it up and that's how it is now right so what I'm going to do is I'm going to run regression once again so I'll go to data data analysis check indignation and that's my dependent value this time now my input range would be x and x square both that means this is my these are my independent variables let me put this regression output right below it click ok fine i get it and we have some comparison in both the models now so if you could see here that r square is 86.86 here and here r square was 0.5 so now this model seems to me better that means 86 percent of the variation in fact if you're running multiple because now there are two independent variables x and x square so i'm bothered much about adjusted r square but 82 percent variance in y now can be explained by x and x square together the significance of model is also better fit you can see that here because initially it was 0 0.05 right at the edge now it is 0, 0.00 how the significance is checked you can see in my previous video of correlation regression and these are my beta coefficients you can clearly see that and all two inter uh, coefficients are significant and uh, x has a higher impact definitely in comparison to x square these are predicted y values you can see them right here and the residuals the difference between original and predicted and this time the predicted is calculated a little differently because my regression equation is different what it is beta 0 which is here plus beta 1 which is right here i'm going to freeze it uh, times x that is here plus see it clearly beta 2 i'm going to freeze it once again function of 4 times x square x square and uh, that's how my predicted values have come up you can simply see that these are the regression equations right okay i don't know what the value what is the problem here i don't know let me just cross check here okay fair enough so i did not freeze my 
intercept that means c66 forgot to freeze that so i'm going to freeze that once again and now if i'm to pull it down our values are absolutely same as predicted by and now you can paste your original y here and check the whether the residuals are same or not now i'm going to take these residuals from here and uh, i am going to clean this thing up and paste these values right here so okay i'll just pick it up again i'm going to pick it up again i want to show you a comparison that's why i'm taking you here taking these values here so these are residuals uh of quadratic and so these are the residuals of quadratic uh, that you know i pasted right from the bottom and these are the residuals for linear and you can simply see that quadratic residuals are lesser in comparison to linear residuals that means this is a better model fit and i'll tell you how so what i'm going to do is in that particular chart of mine this time i'm to add the quadratic line also let's add this i'm going to go to chart design select data i'm going to add quadratic trend here what is my x values they're absolutely same there is no change in it you go to my y values and that would be my predicted y of the quadratic regression and i click okay now let's add it pretty much click okay i go up <laughs> you can see the gray lines here gray dots which is added i'm going to change it again once again into a solid line and let me give it a different color let's say blue or green let's say i'll give it a dark blue color I'll reduce the width of it now you can see there are two predicting lines here one is blue which is of quadratic trend and other is the red which is of linear trend which one is very close to the y that means blue dots you can see the gray line is pretty much close to the dots in comparison to the orange lines so that shows that that uh, quadratic regression here is a better predictor that means quadratic regression is a better predictor so and how i am going to uh, develop an equation out of quadratic and linear so just 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 let me let me develop a, a prediction model here so i am going to have y which i want to predict right and uh, then i have an x value then i have a x square value Right. I want to predict y using x and x square. So let me uh, check with two things. One is actually about linear prediction. So I'm going to take the linear prediction first. And then in one cell, I'm going to take the quadratic equation. Let me set up the linear equation here, first of all. So that would be equal to x uh, beta 0 plus beta 1x right so it will be pretty simple so it will be from here beta 0 plus beta 1 times whatever i'm going to put here in x very simple what will be my quadratic trend it would be equal to my beta 0 that means right here plus beta 1 times what times x value whatever comes here plus my beta 2 value times x square whatever i'm going to put here right yeah that's pretty simple or you can simply use uh, f16 square here whatever you want to do the, the both both the things are absolutely fine so let me see how exactly the things are going to change 
and this is actually x square so what i'm saying is if my x is 1 then that's the prediction as per linear and quadratic details uh, what if x is 12 so look at this that's the difference between quadratic and x value and it is pretty much visible look at this what x is suggesting the linear trend is suggesting this is going to go down 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 and it will take probably a longer duration to you know touch zero but quadratic is suggesting it is going to drop like anything and it will cross the negative here so at x is equal to 9 if you see that's what the values are uh, the predicted values of quadratic and uh, you know um, uh, the linear trend if it is two these are the predicted values so that's how you can calculate the quadratic regression and the predicted values in total by using the regression equation so that's for the quadratic equations what i would suggest is if you have a linear model then you always try uh, in a simple linear regression that how i can actually fit in quadratic equation is it actually a better fit or not and the cross checks are you can check the residuals whether the residuals are lesser or not you can plot the thing and you can understand whether this particular plot is uh, you know showing you whether the quadratic equation is fitting better or not so thank you very much Let's meet in the next video.